Amen. We'll have some more news from East Africa. Just to let you know, the, uh, the work is underway uh, on the next two stories of the children's ministry. So we'll share some photos and stuff about that soon. Turn in your Bibles over to Luke chapter 17. <clears throat> We're going to spend a few minutes uh, studying some things this morning. Can't wait till next week. One of my favorite services of the year. Um, Typically in the past, although with our new setup and our new building, we're not going to change much of anything because we're kind of already in a semicircle. But next Sunday is our Sunday to share our gratitude. And uh, I just love that. I love passing the microphones around and people expressing to God and to each other their gratitude as Thanksgiving is is, is coming up really soon. So this morning, we're going to we're going to kind of start that by getting our hearts and our minds uh, hopefully in a great frame of mind for that. And we'll look uh, at a, a very short, quick story um, in uh, Luke chapter 17. And it's a story about gratitude. And so let's read it together first, starting in verse 11. Now, on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, When he saw he had been healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. It's not a long story. It's a happy story, and it's also a sad story. Uh, it's happy in that these men and, and you know, the, 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 the reason that the priest was involved and the reason that these men were, were pushed out away was to protect society. Now, there's probably a pretty good indication if you look in your Bible, you'll see a footnote. It probably was not leprosy. Uh, it was probably another skin disease, but very contagious. And so people, you can imagine how your life is turned upside down. You have to leave your family, you have to leave your friends, and you go live around other people who have the same diseases, and you are declared unclean, and until you go to the priest and are declared clean, you cannot re-enter life and society. And so when they see Jesus, they yell out at Jesus, oh Jesus, help us, help us, and he just sends them straight to the priest, and we'll come to that part of the story in a moment. And so I want us to look at this uh, this morning, and I really want us to look into our hearts. You know, as we think about next week, it's great to come in and grab a microphone and express our gratitude. But I think that there is a, a deeper part of this story that I hope will prepare us to really have the heart of gratitude in this season we call Thanksgiving. So let's look at a few verses together. I want to I want to start in verse 17. Because as I look at this story, there are three or four things that jump out to me. And the first one is this, Jesus expected gratitude. When you read verse 17, there's this tone of sadness. There's a tone of indignation. There's even a tone of hurt and disappointment in the voice of Jesus when he says, we're not all 10 cleansed. Where are the other nine? Can't you just hear the disappointment and the hurt in Jesus' voice when he looks at the situation and goes, where are the other nine? 
And why is that? It is because Jesus expected people to be grateful. Now go back up to verse 13 a second. It's just something I want to point out here that, you know, there are just these little things that we, we can miss along the way in these stories. They cried out in a loud voice. We're going to see that twice in this story. You know, it's funny how when we are incredibly needy, the barriers that brings down. You know, it, it even appears some would look at this and go, you know, what has happened to their dignity? They're just out there screaming and yelling at Jesus. But sometimes that brings down our pride and our barriers to get the help that we need to get. And it's just this little thing stuck in this story that they don't care what people think. They want to be back with their families and society, and they cry out for help. So let's let that one sink in a little bit. Has our pride gotten so big that we're afraid to ask for help? So Jesus is expecting, how can they not return? How can people yet so ungrateful, so quickly. (laughs) They, they, They have just realized they are healed. Oh, I know how it happens. It happens, it happens just like this. Well, I'll probably see Jesus next week, so I'll thank him then. Well, you know, I think I've been getting better every day anyway. Well, you know what? I haven't seen my family in a while. I want to rush back and see that we get all these things. We want to jump back into life. I really appreciated uh, Josh's communion this morning. I'm going to reference in our last point this morning. But we don't know how to stop and just say, thank you, God. We're, We're on to our life, and I've got all this stuff going on. And we look at this, and we go, how in the world can someone be so ungrateful? And we do it a lot. It's not even that we're ungrateful. It's just that we don't express our gratitude because we want to get on with life. And here's the thing, the point I want to make about that. That should scare us to death. You know why that is? Hold your finger right there and flip over to Romans chapter 1. If you're familiar with Romans 1, I'm not going to do a lesson on Romans 1, but Romans 1 is the progression of sin. And it ends up in... Verse 32, all those those who knew God's righteous decrees, um, that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these very things, but also approve those who practice them. I mean, they end up in Romans 1 in the worst possible place you can be. Do you know where that began in Romans 1? Let me go back there. I've already flipped away from it. Look at verse 21. For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks. The progression of sin to total depravity starts at ingratitude. That's why when we find ourselves not expressing gratitude, it should scare us to death. Because you step down a path you don't want to be on. Get on your knees and thank your God. Go back to Luke. I love this little verse in verse 15. The Bible says, well, actually it's verse 14. He said, go show yourself to the priest. And it says, and as they went. Why do you go show yourself to the priest? To show that you've been cleansed, right? But they had not been cleansed. It wasn't until they went to the priest and on their way were they cleansed. So Jesus tells them a pretty odd command, doesn't he? You know they must have been thinking to themselves, why? I'm not cleansed. Why am I going to go show myself to the priest? 
You know, sometimes you just need to do what Jesus says do. Even when you don't understand it. Even when you see no reason for it. Well, why is that in the Bible? Why does God say do that? And the Bible says, as they went, they were cleansed. Now, can you imagine that? You're not cleansed. You're walking towards a priest. You're not even sure why you're walking there. And I don't know how it happened. You know, you know, maybe they're just walking with a pretty good stride and they looked up. Somehow they had to have a moment where they realized, I don't have this skin disease anymore. <laughs> wow. Here's what we have to remember. We got to remember where we've been. You know, when I started out this walk, I had this terrible disease that has isolated me from society. And now I don't. Where is God taking you? How fresh is that list on your minds? Oh, I think words like loneliness, helplessness, fear, Maybe just sitting in church empty. I don't know where you were, but God's healed you. But gratitude is never going to flow out of us until we remember where we've come from. We remember where it is God has brought us to. I call this amnesia of the heart. It's not that we don't remember what God has done in our lives. Was it your marriage? Was it stuff in your life? Was it addictions? What was it? And oh, intellectually, we remember. But do we remember from here? Amnesia of the heart. And so what you see in this story is you see a man, it, as he went, he saw saw. When he saw, he remembered. That's the source of gratitude. And then we get to verse uh, 15 and 16. And I love this part. I referred to it a while ago. One of them, when he came back, or he saw he was healed, came back praising God. How? In a loud voice. And he throws himself at the feet of Jesus thanked him. True gratitude will take you beyond some boundaries. When's the last time you were just embarrassingly verbal with God? To a point if there were folks around, they might go, hey, 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 hold it down a little. That, no, that's it. Enough. Even to a point, some might say, hey, that's just, that's just overdoing a little bit there, bro, sis. Uh, does that happen often in your quiet time with God, in your prayer time with God, that the overflowing, it, it might be loud, it might just be tears, it, it might be shouting, it, it might be as David did, he danced before the Lord. Uh, that I won't do this morning because you don't want to see that. But what is it? Do you remember the story, right, before Jesus dies, that beautiful story? You, a lot of you already, you know where I'm going with this. The lady that Mary, who has the alabaster jar of perfume that's worth all these, you know, wages, and she just pours it out and she wipes she cleans the feet of Jesus with her tears and wipes with her hair. And somebody gets a little ticked off about it. So Jesus says, what she has done, it's being told right here today, isn't it? Extravagance in our gratitude with God. When is the last time you were just 
extravagant with gratitude. Yes, first with God, but even with other people in your life. Nothing wrong with that. We know it's all because of God, and it's got to start with God. But I love this story, and Jesus is moved by the heart of this one guy. He didn't care what people thought. He was going to praise Jesus loudly in front of everybody and fall at his feet because the expression of gratitude is very powerful. You know, really, is it really gratitude until, unless we say it? Is there such a thing as silent and quiet gratitude? I don't really think so. Not in the heart of what gratitude is all about. So I just want you to look at your relationship with God. Would anybody look at you and accuse you of being too extravagant? Just a little too much with God there. Then finally, I love what happens at the end of this story. And there's a little, little thing that Jesus does here. If you read verse 17 in the story and then verse 19 in the story, Jesus says two different things. In verse 17, Jesus says, we're not all 10 cleansed. And then in verse 19, he says, rise and go, your faith has made you well, and it's different words. The word there is sadzo in Greek, and it means to be made whole. The first word in verse 17 is the word for cleansed. The word in verse 19 is you've been made whole, and I believe that is exactly the point Jesus is making. Ten guys got cleansed, but only one got set free. Only one learned in the heart what was really going to set his life free. Oh, you may think that getting rid of this was going to help your life. Like we have this list in our lives. If I could just this and I could just this or God did this, then I'd be so much more grateful and so much more happy with my life. No, you wouldn't. Because true gratitude comes from being set free. It comes from learning to express to God and to others that true sense of gratitude. That's what set him free. Um, think of it this way. A miracle cleansed his body, but his attitude set him free. Miracles don't really heal. Not in the deep sense of the word. Oh, Jesus healed a lot of people of a lot of things and they were grateful for it. But what's going to determine whether their lives were truly set free is the gratitude that would flow out of that. They were, Jesus used the word here, set free. That's why 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says what? Give thanks in all. If you and I could just learn the heart of gratitude that's in this story. Um, it will set us free. Perhaps the deal is this morning, it's not that you need a change of circumstances in your life. You need a change of heart. You need to learn gratitude. It, it, it's just a simple little story with such deep meaning. I want you to meditate on that this week. Uh, I, you know, this, this time of Thanksgiving is coming up, and I love it. I think it's great. I'm glad we do it. But let's do it from a deep heart and sense of true gratitude, especially with our God. Let's close in prayer. God, I pray that we are a people that live in gratitude. It is so easy, as Josh was sharing this morning, it's just so easy to run around and see the world and get on to the next thing and plan what's ahead. And we don't know how to stop. 
We don't know how to say thank you. We don't know how to take in all that you have done for us, especially at the cross. God, because of the cross, it doesn't really matter what our circumstances in the world are, good or bad, rich or poor, weak or strong, all those things that Paul lists out in his life. He said, I count them all rubbish. They're nothing except one thing, knowing Jesus and the peace that we get through the cross of Christ. God, help us to be a people that overflow, that are profuse in our gratitude to you. And God, help that to carry out then in our, our relationships and our, our interactions with the world, that people would just see us and know us as those are just those people that are so, so thankful. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you for this Samaritan who understood the heart of Jesus and understood what Jesus taught. God, help us to imitate that. We pray this through Jesus. Amen.